Good evening, welcome to Marty's Tying Bench. Tonight I'm tying a pattern I haven't even fished yet. This is called a Dirty Bird. It's a Ken Morris pattern. It was brought to my attention by a fellow that was a mentor to some veterans who, Healing Water veterans, fished the North Platte in Wyoming last fall. And apparently the fish were very aggressive with this one. And if you've tied flies, very long you just look at some patterns and say I can make a fish eat that they just look buggy start to think like a fish well this is one of those patterns I'm looking forward to incorporating it this is a size 12 hook a Dairiki 730 that's a 2x long hook and the bead is 1 8 and to get that bead to sit still I'm gonna put a little bit of lead behind it just pinch that in at one, two, just three turns. And now I'll be able to push those up all the way into the bead so that all my thread wraps and my soft hackle are down along the shank. You can use any thread. Uh, an 8 dot's going to work better. I've got an olive in hand, but black's what's recommended since the last material material that you tie on is a black dubbing. The main material on this is partridge and the brown is preferred or the brown's what I'm going to use tonight. And I'll just get a good bundle off of a feather and tie those in about the hook shank length. And stay up on the straight part of the shank, so don't let that droop down. The ribbing is a copper ultrawire brassy. You want something a little bit bigger. You don't want to use the small necessarily because our dubbing is rather soft and a fine wire would just sink into your dubbing. What I'm going to use tonight is is awesome possum olive. This one is, uh, this fly is tied in a lot of different colors. Anything from hare's ear to uh, olive to black. And in Oregon they tie it in orangish colors for the fall October caddis. I want something that's got just a little bit of shagginess to it. So rather than super fine, I went with possum. A rabbit would work as well. And I know that's lumpy. I'm going to fix that with my second coat. There, looks good. Now I'm going to keep my ribbing turns fairly close. And that's really going to secure my shape and make the fly durable if it starts getting eaten like we expect it to. Now the unique feature of this fly is this crystal flash. Well, you can call it an underwing or a soft hackle of crystal flash. What I've got is six strands of it and I'm going to fold it over as I tie so there's ultimately twelve. There's six on my side, six on the far side, and I'm kind of holding off on my thread tension, not making it terribly tight because I want to distribute these around. And then I'll stroke them back and cut them. So that they're just a little bit longer than the body, maybe maybe the hook length, hook length. There we go. Now I'm going to find a partridge feather 
that has fibers that are going to go back about the same length. You get a bag of partridge feathers or you get a skin, boy it sure saves some time if you just go through it and clean them all up first. It makes it a lot easier to compare one feather to another. Okay, cut the tip so I got something for the thread to bite on. I want these turns to be a little firmer so I can tug on it with my hackle pliers. And as I wrap, I'm going to fold those fibers rearward. Whoops. Good. And my last material is the black dubbing, and I'm using Awesome Possum again. And the space that I've left for the dubbing, I, I kind of aim for about the same width as the bead. And the whip finish. There you go. Now that uh, caddis underwing kind of, excuse me, the crystal flash underwing provides a little bit of flash. And if this is meant to imitate anything, it's probably a caddis. <coughs> Like I said, it's just buggy. You swing it like a wet fly, fish it as a dropper, any way you want to fish it. Dirty bird.